House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer will be holding a phone call with the FBI Director Christopher Wray. This is after Comer threatened to hold Wray in contempt of Congress over his refusal to turn over a key document, the document in which a whistleblower describes an alleged criminal scheme involving President Biden and a foreign national. Comer's contempt threat against Wray may have just worked, been effective, because in a brand new letter from Assistant FBI Director Christopher Dunham obtained by Politico, the agency now says it's willing to work with Comer and is prepared to offer his committee, quote, access to the information in a format and setting that maintains confidentiality and protects the important sensitivities and interests. Let's talk about this a little bit closer. Joining us now, Congressman Richard McCormick is joining us and also alongside him, retired CIA operative Mike Baker. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Good to see you. Uh, so first off, uh, to you, Congressman, obviously uh, the threat of contempt of Congress is a very serious, real thing that Comer made to Ray. What do you make of the response now we're hearing from the FBI? It sounds like they're making a move to hand over this file. I think they better. I think they better take very seriously what uh, Jim Jordan and the Judiciary Committee are, are all about right now. Uh, we don't want to be defunding anybody, but when an agency thinks they're more important than the representatives uh, of this august body of people, uh, they have another thing coming. We're, we're not playing around right now. We want the truth. We want to be able to have access to the same things that we've always had access to, and, and I think uh, we're going to get that access. You know, uh, Mike, from your experience, you know, at the CIA, does the FBI have any reason to withhold this document? In a statement previously, it had said lives were at risk, but many say uh, they're just stonewalling here because, in fact, it could implicate our sitting president. Well, sure. Look, you always worry about, you know, the, the protection of, of sources, confidential sources, right? There's always this issue of sources and methods, and, and so there is a reason for a need to know. But this is not a good look for the, the Bureau in the sense that they have established protocols for sharing uh, classified information in a very limited dissemination. So the idea that the Bureau would say, because they, they mind you, this is important, the Bureau has not denied that the alleged documents exist. That's right? true. The whistleblower yep. is referred to. But they have said that we're worried about confidential sources. Uh, also, they've said, and this is particularly not a good look, that uh, it's unverified information. Well, look, that didn't stop anybody in the past, in the recent past, for passing around information and leaking to the press and discussing it openly, uh, unverified information about the previous administration. So they, as the congressman has said, mm -hmm. uh, they need to deal with this appropriately. And, and stonewalling was not a good look. Right. Oh, Mike, we'll get to the Durham report in just a moment here. Uh yeah, well, so along those lines, Secretary of State Antony Blinken could soon be facing a contempt vote uh, of his own. House Foreign Affairs Chairman Mike McCall is renewing the push after Blinken's refusal to let the full committee view a dissent cable about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. In fact, here's what McCall said earlier this month about that. Listen. They offered a filtered summary. They've okay. offered another sort of a peace offering, if you will. I think it's a delay tactic. But I am prepared to move forward to contempt proceedings. But I take it very seriously, Jonathan. I mean, I, this would be the first time a Secretary of State's ever been held in contempt by Congress. Congressman McCormick, so Mike McCall had a look at, I guess you could say, a somewhat redacted version of the July 2021 cable last week, but says it's not good enough. Why not? Why isn't it good enough? Well, as a veteran, somebody who was there in Afghanistan, somebody who's seen people die, somebody who's paid the price by spending time away from our families for months and years at a time, this is very personal. We just want the truth. Uh, if we're going to make good decisions, if we're going to make, if we're going to learn from the past, we have to know the truth. Congress should not be denied anything, uh, especially when it comes to a classified setting. We have all the different ways of actually uh, declassifying information inside those those settings. Uh, even if you have to use top secret information, McCall has that access and, and demands it so he can make the right calls into the future and also in reflecting on what we've done wrong. Yeah, we'll see if this uh, contempt of Congress uh, with McCall goes forward. Again, it looks like the one with Ray may be averted in light of this new letter. Let's talk a little bit, though, about this Durham report and what, what we know now. Former FBI Director James Comey was out on MSNBC. He was asked if there were mistakes made with the crossfire hurricane investigation into Trump. So I guess here's part of his statement here. Oh, definitely. And they were found four years ago by the inspector general. So there's nothing new in this new document. 
What were some of those mistakes from your point of view? Oh, that the FBI didn't communicate clearly the status of certain sources. They didn't double check certain information before putting it in a court application for a foreign intelligence wiretap and a bunch of others. Oh, definitely mistakes made, but there's nothing new here. And by the way, he's out selling a crime novel, uh, <laughs> by the way. Uh, Mike, your reaction to Comey's statements here? I guess for one thing, we're glad that mainstream media is bringing it up. But it really yes. is shocking uh, to just kind of hear it being brushed aside that this bombshell report is nothing to see. Well, and that, and that's not unexpected. Look, I mean, I, I you know, okay, full marks for the for some of the mainstream media to 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 be addressing this issue. Uh, but no surprise that you know former director Comey is is reluctant to classify what happened as anything other than what appears to be missteps, which is how the bureau just recently referred to the, the Durham report, and and we've corrected those missteps. Look, you know Washington D.C. is famous for a couple of things. One is that investigations rarely result in any meaningful consequences, and we're seeing that with this whole effort, right? But. I think what the American people need to take away from all of this is the importance for transparency. No matter who's in charge, no matter what administration is, is in power, you need to insist to the degree possible on transparency. And that requires uh, a willingness to talk. It requires open and honest dialogue. Uh, and we've got to we've got to get out of our respective trenches and try to find a way to move people towards the center, because otherwise this idea of, of having to issue, you know, contempt charges against various people, administrations, having constant investigations, that's no way to run a government. Wow. This, this is really concerning to me. I, I got to chime in here. Sure. Think about the Go government being weaponized weaponized against its citizens. I don't care if you're a former president or anybody else. We saw this in the Obama administration when you used the IRS against people who donated a certain way, and nobody was ever held accountable. As far as I know, nobody was ever put in jail. Nobody got a letter of reprimand. Nothing changed in the IRS other than, oh, my bad. Sorry, we did that. And when you look at ATF coming up with laws and, and trying to enforce them as if they're legislators, when you look at the FBI actually doing things wrong and then saying, oh, yeah, sorry, we did that, but nobody gets in trouble for that. That is ridiculous. We have to hold them accountable. That should scare anybody who's ever heard the word communism coming out of their mouth. Uh, this is what communist governments do when they weaponize a government against its people. This is a very egregious error, and I think it has to be more than just my bad. It has to be somebody held accountable. Well, the one last one last note, um, and one last topic I want to bring up with you, Congressman. So House Speaker McCarthy is facing backlash uh, from the House Freedom Caucus over his debt limit deal with President Biden. Here's what Byron Donalds uh, said about it yesterday. Listen. If we were going to do something constructive for the country, if Joe Biden didn't want to get rid of his crazy Green New Deal spending, the least we could have done is secure the southern border. Yes, here, here. And we didn't do that either. To my Republican colleagues, vote no. Vote no and do the right thing. And let's go find a better deal. So, Congressman McCormick, my, my question for you uh, is quite simple. How are you going to vote? And how do you think this is all going to play out? I'm a no, uh, but I will also take into account that they worked very hard to do whatever they could. I think it was done in good faith. I know that Garrett Graves, uh, Patrick McHenry, uh, the Speaker, have all done their very best to come out with uh, what they think is uh, something of substance. My problem is we're only dealing with 11 percent of the budget. When we're talking about these arguments, you're talking about a fraction, <laughs> barely one tenth of the, go the government's expenses is what we're arguing over, and they're certainly not going to cut all of it. So until we have some real substantial talks, when we start talking about health care spending, which we don't even touch, when we talk about 70 percent, over 70 percent of the budget, which is considered automatic or, or non-discretionary, uh, we're not really having a real conversation. I just suggested a speaker and as well as a leader that we have a committee just on health care. Mm -hmm. One out of every five doc, uh, dollars we spend in Congress is spending on health care, and it's going up by the most, the largest increase mm -hmm. uh, of inflation of any expense we have. Uh, by itself, six trillion dollars on both private and government spending. That would be the third largest GDP in the world just on health care. We have all kinds of problems. I know just the guy who could fix it. I, yeah, I know, with your experience, uh, for sure. Well, obviously, Fair a big point. day with the uh, full vote happening in the House. You're a hard no, as we heard so many others, and also this call with Ray and Comer. Mike Baker, Congressman Richard McCormick. Gentlemen, appreciate your time on the big top stories today. Thanks, guys. Thank you.